Today is World Ocean Awareness Day, and you might think in central London that it's not something um, that it's easy to be aware of. But I am sitting here in the gallery, surrounded by indigenous artworks, and when I was thinking about the ocean this morning, I thought about how extraordinary the relationship with many indigenous people that I know is with the ocean and how many, indeed hundreds of paintings and prints I've seen over the years that involve a reverence for the ocean. I um, am sitting in front of these beautiful little etchings by Dennis Nona, an artist from the Torres Straits. And he made his living before he was um, uh, an artist as a crayfisherman, and he used to dive, deep dive without um, an aqualung and pull up crayfish from the bottom of the ocean. And here in these shells, he's put all the sea totems, which were so important to him, beautifully, beautifully, beautifully um, etched into the plate. And then this painting over here by Dennis is actually, I think, one of the most amazing examples of the relationship between a traditional um, indigenous person and the natural world. If you look at this, you think there's a pelican and two turtles. But when you look closely, you see that all around there are pelicans. And actually, this is the constellation of the pelican. And in the Torres Straits, when the pelican is directly above you, um, and the stars are alike, it means that the turtle will mate. And you can see here this um, poor female turtle looking rather hard done by. And all the people will rejoice because there will be turtle eggs to eat. And here you can see um, these little star-like um, shapes are floating in the water, are the little round discs um, which actually provide food for the turtle. And Dennis, it's almost, this picture is almost like a sort of view of the earth from space. Um, he's hand coloured it, but this sense of everything connecting, the constellations move, um, the little uh, shellfish move in, the turtles mate and the people eat and rejoice. It's a remarkable piece. But my actually most um, favourite piece hanging in the gallery at the moment is this. Um, this little turtle was made by an Aboriginal friend of mine and she put it in this bit of green plastic net and when I asked her why um, she explained to me and it is really really salutary. Um, in, a, in the early 70s the Japanese started using drift nets uh, to catch bluefin tuna off the coast of Australia and these nets were vast, some of them were six miles long and of course, when they finished fishing, they were meant to reel them in, but that was such a laborious process that they just cut the nets. And the nets drifted across the sea, and in there, they caught turtles, they caught dugong, they caught whales, they caught sharks, and they washed up on the beaches of Arnhem Land in northwest Australia. And these, the Aboriginals, walking along the beach would find their totems dying or dead on the sand. Um, imagine if they'd washed up on Bondi Beach, there would have been an international outcry seeing all these magnificent sea creatures lying tangled in nets. So some of the Aboriginal women started collecting these nets and they started using their traditional pandanus weaving, which is, is this um, grass here from which she's made the turtle. And then, just to show what happened to the turtle, she put him in the green net. And it's an incredibly powerful piece, and I think says um, more than perhaps I can say. But um, I am very grateful to the care that the Indigenous people take of the seas around Australia, and that um, they don't overfish, they take what they need. And I just wish we could do the same.